हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आई टी एल एस अकेडमी आवर टूडेज लेक्चर इज वैक्सीनेशन एंड इम्यूनाइजेशन इंट्रोडक्शन पीपल रेयरली सफर फ्रॉम द सेम इन्फेक्शियस डिसीज ट्वाइस when such reinfection does occur it is usually either with an antigenically modified strain it may be common cold or influenza or the patient is immunocompromised or we can say that immunosuppressive drugs or immunological disorders or long time has elapsed since the first infection here two cases are given in which people can uh, infect from the same infectious disease twice first case is when there is infection from the uh, same uh, uh, from the same antigen but of the modified strain uh, we can say that if uh, it is some uh, something like this then uh, when it will in fact next time it will be something like this although it is same species but this is a modified strain or it may be a immunocompromised person that is the immunity is suppressed due to immunosuppressive drugs or some many other reasons that is the person became immunocompromised and in this case person can be infected with the same infectious disease twice alternatively the patient may have failed to eliminate the primary infection which has then remained latent and emerges in a modified or similar form that is herpes simplex cold sores herpes zoster and chicken pox next point is immunity towards reinfection reinfection means infecting again re means it is happening a second time so the reinfection was recognized long before the discovery of the causal agents of infectious disease we can say that reinfection is a second infection that follows recovery from a previous infection by the same causative agent so we can say that reinfection is a process in which causative agent remains same it does not change our next point is an early development was the attempted control of smallpox as we know that we have already eradicated smallpox from our country so we can say that early development was the attempted control of smallpox or variola measure variola was the cause of smallpox through the deliberate introduction into the skin of healthy individuals of material taken from active smallpox lesions now a days vaccination and immunization procedures are used not only to protect the individual against infection but also to protect communities against epidemic disease as we know that we are already suffering from corona virus 
and still we are searching from the vax for vaccine so vaccination and immunization becomes important against fight against any epidemic disease Let's see the spread of infection. How the infection spreads from one person to another or we can say from one community to other community. So let's start. First point is infectious disease may either be spread from a common reservoir of the infectious agent that is distinct from deceased individual or common source or they might transfer directly from a deceased individual to a healthy one or we can say that from a propagated source. Sources may be of two types. First one is common source and second one is propagated source. We will discuss these two sources in detail. Although we can say that infectious diseases commonly spread through the direct transfer of bacteria, viruses or other germs from one person to another. This can happen when an individual with the bacterium or virus touches, kisses, coughs or sneezes on someone who isn't infected. Second point is three things are necessary for an infection to occur. So we are going to deal with the reason for an infection to occur. First one is source. Source is the place from where infection spreads or infection initiates. Source places where infectious agents like germs live. So we can say that source is necessary for any infection because all the uh, all the germs of the uh, disease causing a, or disease causing agents live in this particular source the sinks may be surfaces human skin next thing is susceptible person although there is any reservoir of the germs so Next thing will be susceptible person on which these reservoir of infection will, uh, will show their effect. So let's see susceptible person with a bay for germs to enter the body. Any passes to enter the germs is necessary through which germs can enter the body and the person which has this particular entry it is known as a susceptible person and this shows the susceptibility to a particular disease that is coming from uh, that particular infectious agent next is transmission transmission is another very important thing in any infection to occur. So we can say that transmission is a way germs are moved to the susceptible person. So we can say that transmission is a process in which germs uh, uh, as if these are situated in a particular source so these will transfer to any particular uh, susceptible person by a process of transmission uh, these germs are going to a susceptible person and we can say that by the pro by the process by which these are going to this particular person this is known as transmission people can be sick 
with symptoms of an infection or colonized with germs and not have symptoms of an infection but able to pass the germs to others we can say that germs are also found in the healthcare environment healthcare environment like hospitals and hospitals are also source of many infections so this slide is showing the modes through which any infection can spread these modes are given here so this is the chain or spread of infection so let's see one by one by which modes any infection can spread in a particular person's body first one is causative agent there must be any causative agent and this is pathogenic organism which causes disease next one is a reservoir or source source is the place where all the disease causing germs live next one is means of exit or way out of the body next is mode of transmission or method of spread there must be any particular process or procedure by which germs can enter the person's body next is portal of entry this provide the way of germs into the body next one is person at risk or we can say any susceptible person is important in spread of any infection let's start with common source infections first point is in common source infections the reservoir of infection might be animate or insect vectors of malaria and yellow fever animate are biotic organism or they might be inanimate in animate are abiotic organism we will discuss infected drinking water cooling towers contaminated food supply so, uh, so we can say that any mates are organism that are biotic organism biotic include the biotic include the things that are related with our environment that are not physical uh, like we can say that uh, vectors uh, causing malaria and a yellow fever these are biotic sources or animate sources and these can also be inanimate sources or abiotic sources and these abiotic sources include drinking water cooling towers and contaminated food supply in the simplest of cases the source of infection is transient that is food sourced to a single retail outlet or to an isolated event such as wedding reception in such instances the onset of new cases is very rapid and faced over 1 to 1.5 incubation periods and the decline in new cases closely follows the elimination of the source
Next point is if the source of the infection persists after onset, then the incidence of new cases is maintained at a level which is commensurate with the infectivity of the pathogen and the frequency of exposure of individuals. For those infectious diseases that are transmitted to humans via insect vectors, the onset and decline phases of epidemics are rarely observed other than, uh, other than as a reflection of the seasonal variations in the prevalence of the insect. Next point is diseases such as these are generally controlled by public health measures and environmental control of the vector with vaccination and immunization being deployed to protect individuals. Next source is propagated source infection. As we know that we have studied common source infection and propagated source infection. So we have already studied common source infection and now we are going to discuss this propagated source infection. So let's start. First point is propagated outbreaks of infection relate to the direct transmission of an infective agent from a diseased individual to a healthy and susceptible one. Mechanism of such transmission include Inhalation of infective aerosol, these may be measles, mumps, diphtheria or direct physical contact which includes syphilis, herbs virus and where sanitation standards are poor through the introduction of infected fecal material into drinking water that is cholera and typhoid. These all are examples of propagated source infections. Our next point is the ease of transmission and hence the rate of onset of an epidemic relates not only to the susceptibility status and general state of health of the individuals but also to the virulence properties of the organism, the route of transmission and the duration of infective period associated with the disease. So we can say that in the propagated progressive source epidemic in which one or more of the first wave of cases serves as a source of infection for subsequent cases and those subsequent cases in turn serves as a sources for later cases. Our next point is the number of persons to which a single infective individual might transmit the disease and hence the rate of occurrence of the infection within the population will depend upon the population density, 
with respect to susceptible and infective individuals the degree and nature of their social interaction and the duration and timing of the infective period so we are going to discuss objectives of a vaccine or immunization program first point is there is the potential to develop a protective vaccine or immunization program for each and every infectious disease whether or not such vaccines are developed and deployed is related to the severity and economic impact of the disease upon the community as well as the effects upon the individuals so first point is severity of the disease the severity of the disease not only in terms of its morbidity and mortality and the probability of permanent injury to its survivors but also in the likelihood of infection must be sufficient to warrant the development and routine deployment of a vaccine and its subsequent use this we can say while is influenza vaccines are constantly reviewed and stocks maintain the control of influenza epidemics through vaccination is not recommended there are some modes are given which are responsible for the strengthening of the immunization program these are uh, some routine immunization and strengthening program these include liver raising partnership evidence based planning training and capacity building communication and social mobilization monitoring accountability and supportive supervision mass and mid media campaign and last one is support in non SMNET states through deployment. These are some modes, some models by which immunization program can be strengthened. So we we were uh, we were discussing the modes of uh, infection. so we have already discussed severity of the disease and our next point is effectiveness of the vaccine or immunogen vaccination and immunization programs seldom confers 100% protection against the target disease it happens very rarely that there is any uh, certainty about protection is 100% this is very rare more commonly the degree of protection is 60 to 
नेक्स्ट वन इज सेफ्टी नो मेडिकल और थेरेप्यूटिक प्रोसीजर कम्स विदाउट सम रिस्क टू द पेशेंट ऑल पॉसिबल स्टेप्स आर टेकन टू इंश्योर सेफ्टी क्वालिटी एंड एफिकेसी ऑफ वैक्सीन एंड इम्यूनोलॉजिकल प्रोडक्ट्स द रिस्क एसोसिएटेड विद इम्यूनाइजेशन प्रोसीजर्स मस्ट बी कॉन्स्टेंटली रिव्यूड एंड बैलेंस्ड अगेंस्ट द रिस्क ऑफ एंड एसोसिएटेड विद कॉन्ट्रैक्टिंग डिसीज नेक्स्ट वन इज कॉस्ट ऑफ द वैक्सीन चीप इफेक्टिव वैक्सीन आर एन इसेंशियल कंपोनेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल बैटल अगेंस्ट इन्फेक्शियस डिसीज द न्यूअर वैक्सीन particularly those that have been genetically engineered are considerably more expensive putting the cost beyond many budgets of developing countries last but not least is the longevity of the immunity the ideal of any vaccine is to provide lifelong protection to the individual against disease immunological memory depends upon the survival of cloned populations of small b and t lymphocytes that we have already covered in our previous lectures so uh, this uh, was all about the particular vaccination and immunization we will continue this particular series in our next lecture thank you very much for watching this session guys you can follow itls academy on instagram facebook twitter youtube whatsapp and on linkedin you can also subscribe itls academy on youtube and you can get it on google play store so thank you very much for watching this session guys you can like share and subscribe this particular video and you can join idls academy for online training courses and online certificate courses you can also call on this particular number for any help regarding courses or uh, any job oriented courses and you can visit www.itlsacademy.com So thank you very much again for watching this session